Welcome to Sermon Rewind, where we take a look back at the sermon that we heard on Sunday, seek to uncover the truths that we find in Scripture, and then apply those truths to our lives. This week, we're talking all about seeing Jesus clearly. And we started talking about Jesus healing this blind man, which is a very interesting miracle because it actually is a two-step miracle. The story goes like this. This blind man's friends brought the blind man to Jesus, and they said, can you please, please heal this blind man? So Jesus took him by the hand, took him away from the crowd, and he places his hands on his eyes. And then Jesus asks a question I don't think he even ever alludes to again in any other miracle. Instead of saying, hey, you are healed, pick up your mat and walk, or now you can hear and you can talk, he says, do you see anything? And the answer from the man is basically, yeah, but not really. He says, I I see people, but they look like trees. And so Jesus touches him again until he can see clearly. Now, what we're going to see in these two stories is that, that Jesus has been walking with his disciples, walking with the crowds, and they kind of see who Jesus is, but they still have a lot more to learn. And they have a lot more to go through to actually see Jesus clearly. One of the stories starts like this, that Jesus, he takes his disciples and some of the crowds are with him and he sits them all down and he asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? And his disciples start to answer him. They say, well, they think that you're John the Baptist back from the dead. They think that you're Elijah. They, They think that you're one of the prophets. But then Jesus asks the most important question there is. Who do you say that I am? Forget what the crowd says. I get it. The crowd doesn't see Jesus as a Messiah or a Christ. Because they think the Messiah is going to come and he's going to be a conqueror. They want someone who is like Samson, big and strong and and can battle. And yet here's Jesus who's a, a carpenter. And no one from nowhere with, honestly, a a bunch of misfits around him. So they think he's spiritual, but not the Messiah. But Jesus says, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers. He says, you are the Christ. Peter sees who Jesus is. Despite all the outward appearances, despite what everybody else is saying, despite even if he maybe gets in a little bit bit of trouble, (laughs) Peter sees Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, the one who is going to come and save them. But then Jesus starts to tell the disciples in the crowd his plans. And his plan goes something like, He is going to be rejected. He is going to be beaten. He is then going to be killed, but he is going to resurrect on the third day. And as Peter is hearing all this, after he just said that he's the Messiah, he doesn't like what he's hearing. Because again, Peter, even though he sees Jesus as the Messiah, he still thinks the Messiah is going to be one who conquers everything, who's going to defeat all the enemies, who's going to rebuild the temple and bring about world peace. He's ready for the Messiah to bring him everything that he's ever wanted on earth, health, wealth, prosperity. He's ready to have position and power and comfort. He's ready not to be just a fisherman anymore. He's ready to be a somebody. And the Messiah is supposed to make him a somebody. But as he's hearing Jesus talk about what's going to happen, he recognizes this isn't what I wanted. So he pulls Jesus aside and he starts to rebuke Jesus. But Then Jesus rebukes him and says, you get back. Be gone, Satan. Go away, Satan. This is what I came to do. Jesus then tells the crowds and his disciples what it takes to follow him. It's not that you could just 
say that you follow Jesus, but then do whatever you want. It's not that you say that you want to follow Jesus and you do this and that, but then you get to choose what the rest of your life looks like. Following Jesus doesn't come with all these promises of all these wonderful things that we've always wanted on earth. No, following Jesus requires surrender. This is what Jesus has to say about following him. In Mark chapter 8, verse 34, And calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. He goes on to say in verse 36, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? In other words, what Jesus is saying here is, if you want to follow if you want to follow Jesus, you have to deny yourself. The health, the wealth, and prosperity, that's not what following Jesus is about. Having the full bank account or the perfect relationship or all these other things that we think that will make us happy, that's not what Christianity is all about. What Christianity is all about is something much, much greater to the point that Jesus can say, well, what would it even profit a man if he gained the whole world, all of his heart's desire, that he gained everything that he ever wanted? but he wasn't able to return back to what he was created to do in the beginning. And that is worship God, have a relationship with God. Jesus didn't come to give us our fleshly desires. Jesus came to give us what our heart and our soul truly needs. The Messiah is not one that's going to fix all your earthly problems. The Messiah is the one that fixes our greatest problem and restores our relationship with God like we were created to have since the beginning of time. So you have to decide. Do you want to keep living for the world? Do you keep wanting to chasing everything? You want to keep chasing after all these fleshly desires or do you want to return to what you were created for? Return to your actual purpose in life. If you want to return to that, it's going to require sacrifice. Deny yourself and follow Jesus. Mm -hmm.